What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we are here with week one of season four in the Indigo League of Legends. Man, it's it's kind of nice to have a fresh team uh, and then hit the Indigo League of Legends up yet again. I'm really excited for so many battles this season because there's a lot of new people and even some returning old faces too. So first for the Venus Venusaur, we're going to be going up against the LA Nitty Kings, of course coached by Johnny Diesel. We have battled him several times in multiple leagues, and at this point I know he's a great battler, and I also know that our battles are very haxy prone. So I was preparing for that. Um, in preparation for that, I wanted to trap a lot of his, he had a couple of psychic types. Um, he brought Starmie and Jirachi. Neither of those wants to deal with Drapion, so Drapion was really my dedicated lead. I could kind of pressure him to not set up rocks or anything like that as well. I have a mixed cloister to set up shell smash, which could be a possible win condition depending on if I got a chance to do that. Um, a more specially defensive Vaporeon and a more physically defensive Fortress just to be able to block. He, I knew he would be bringing Weavile and so I wanted to have several ways to deal with that. Um, Scarf Tornadus forces him to go for Ice Shard with Weavile and then of course that will not KO me, which is very nice. And then I actually decided on Mega Diancy against Mega Latios or Lat Latias rather, Medicham or the Venusaur, just because Diancy really stopped him from getting up his own entry hazards. It almost walls things like Togekiss, which I thought he'd bring, which he ended up bringing. And then at that point, as long as I can get a Mega Evolve, which is why I put Protect on Diancy, I can handle his faster threats such as um, Weavile just because I, I can really pressure and stop them from hitting me as hard. Now, Drapion is my dedicated lead here. The only worst case scenario there would be if he let off with something like Togekiss, which I didn't see happening. Uh, and even if he leads off with Togekiss and he paralyzes me, I can still hit him back with the poison jab and two hit KO, basically any Togekiss set too. So I wasn't completely worried about that. I also didn't want to run into possible burn shenanigans with Chandelure, but none of those Pokemon really want to stay in on Drapion anyway. So Drapion is going to be our lead. First battle of the season. Let's go. He starts off with Jirachi. Perfection. Let's go for Pursuit. Oh, he just he just stays in. So Pursuit doesn't really do anything. Uh, so that was a good play by him. I could have just gone for a knockoff and did a ton of damage in the beginning. But let's see what he's going to go for. It is nice to see that I'm faster. I don't have max speed investment, but I, I have a good amount. I have the rest in special defense to take some of those more errant hits a little easier. Uh, he is just going to go straight for Iron Head. Doesn't do as much as I expected it to do, honestly. Uh, Drapion has great natural bulk, but Jirachi also has base 100 attack, which is above average, so um, We're just gonna stay in here and go for knockoffs here I'm not gonna go for pursuit again because if he stays in we're just in the same position and uh, If he does switch out he doesn't have anything that can go mega because the only Pokemon he drafted that could go mega is Ampharos He didn't bring it so I get to remove something else's item definitely not a bad situation uh, I'm gonna go out into fortress here on the expected icicle crash I take that very, very nicely, and if he goes for any type of coverage move, such as his own knockoff or a low kick, he's going to take Rocky Helmet damage, which is perfection. Uh, it is nice to see the Life Orb recoil, because that means I'm going to be in a position to uh, kind of abuse that later. I decided to just go for Volt Switch there, knowing that he probably wouldn't stay in, and if he did, I'd do a little bit of chip damage to his uh, uh, Weavile. I went out here and decided to go for knockoff thinking I would be able to KO the Chandelure, but I only had 32 attack EVs, and so it's not quite enough to really KO Chandelure. He is Scarf though, so that's nice. I don't have to worry about him outspeeding um, some of my other options now. I did just switch out there. I can save Tornadus and get that HP back via Regenerator, and um, I could have gone into a variety of things right here, but I wanted to go into Vaporeon. Decided to go for Wish first, expecting the knockoff. Because if he goes for a knockoff and gets rid of my leftovers, the next knockoff won't do as much. Whereas if I directly attack, I might be in range for a knockoff to 2 hit KO me. Um, so he brings in Machamp here as I go for Scald. And I was worried that he would have Guts since he brought it in like that. Um, of course, Guts would help him out if he has a burn on his Machamp. But he actually has Dynamic Punch. I thought Fortress would be an okay switch in if he had guts but whoa that dynamic punch does too much damage and um, the rocky helmet is nice because he's going to put him in a nice range to where I don't have to use hurricane necessarily to knock him out but fortress is going to go down to two of those and uh, he's going to take a good amount of recoil from the rocky helmet which is pretty nice 
Um, I am just going to go on into Diancie here. I knew he could have Bullet Punch, so that's why I decided to protect Omega of all instead of just going for the offensive move. But since he does switch into Chandelure after the Mega Evolution, I will outspeed him. So that's nice there. The, the Mega Evolution for Diancie is really important, so I could have just attacked. But it, I didn't lose too much of a turn here from it because Earth Power is going to be able to KO his Chandelure. A combination of Moonblast and Earth Power actually KOs the majority of his team. So uh, that was definitely not too bad of a position to be in there. Now right here, I didn't want to take a possible Scald or Hydro Pump. I knew he had to be analytic in order to KO my um, my Cloister. So I come in here hoping to live a hit, but he is definitely analytic as a Life Orb analytic boosted Hydro Pump. KOs me and that was a resisted hit and that is ridiculous. So right here, we're just gonna go for another knockoff. If he wants to stay in, he's gonna lose the Life Orb and take a ton of damage. I was also hoping to remove the leftovers from a possible Togekiss switch in, which is exactly what happens. Now I get to go out into Diancie and he actually gets his Thunder Wave bounce back. I guess he thought I would. Um, I actually haven't really shown that I'm Scarfed yet. So he might've thought that I would go stay in and go for a coverage option. Uh, but that's great. Now the now it's a paralyzed Togekiss and I don't have to deal with that as much. I had a chance to KO here with Moonblast after rocks and I barely miss out. I think that was a low damage roll. Either that or he might have a little bit more HP because he is using the analytic. I don't know. Um, Psyshock here does a ton of damage because I switch out again that analytic boost. Man, that's so much damage to Vaporeon. Fortunately though, I do force him to go into Machamp. And now he does show that he has a lot of speed investment because he is able to outspeed Vaporeon. And that's going to be able to take out Vaporeon actually. Uh, with that damage though, I am wondering if he's banded. I do manage to hit Hurricane, which is pretty nice there. I could have just gone for um, a coverage option. I had Icy Wind. I actually switched Superpower for Icy Wind right before the battle, which was stupid. That was stupid. Should have just kept Superpower. That'll come up in a little bit. But we're going to go on to Diancie here as he doubles into Weavile, which was a good offensive move. Weavile can get um, Iron Tail as a steel coverage move, or even Metal Claw, I guess, if you don't want to risk missing as much. I'm just going to go for Protect to see if he has it. He does not have it. So Icicle Crash is going to come through. I know that that can't KO me, and I can just take out Weavile after I get hit by it. Um, I do take a lot of damage from it because it's Life Orbed. Unfortunately, I get flinched. Oh, that really bit me in the butt right there. Now that I got flinched, I have to figure out a way to KO Weavile because now I'm in a 50-50 scenario where yes, I outspeed it with my Tornadus, but uh, he could just go into Togekiss. So I decided to go for Hurricane in case he switches to Togekiss and I miss Hurricane. So Tornadus goes down now and that means all I have left is Drapion. Drapion can take a hit from Weavile, but it can't take a hit from Weavile and Togekiss. So let's just come in here with Drapion and go for a Poison Jab, hoping that I don't get flinched again. That would be great. I could have had this battle wrapped up if I had just hit the Hurricane. Uh, of course, a safer option would have been to go for a U-turn in case he did switch out. But um, yeah, that didn't end up coming to pass. So I don't get flinched, which is nice. I need Togekiss to get paralyzed to win this battle. We're both on our last Pokemon. I can't one hit KO Togekiss because Poison Jab doesn't have high enough space power. And he gets paralyzed, woo, yay, all right. So the, the hacks, gods, or lack thereof. This is Pokemon, I guess, that's that's part of Pokemon. It made this a much bigger nail biter than it needed to be. Really, the hacks just hurt my differential because I would have ended the battle three and O if I hadn't gotten flinched. So now we end with the one O, which is actually okay by me because we did that battle against such an awesome opponent. So thank you very much, Johnny, for yet another close battle. I know that you were expecting the hacks there in the end, but yeah, I, I don't want to have a heart attack each time I battle you, man. It's not it's not completely necessary. It seems a little bit, if I were prone to stress, that would be a little stressful to have to deal with that each time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. This That was a hell of a match to start the season with. Up next, I think our next opponent is actually, let's see, so week one, week two. Up next, we're up against one of the newer people in the league. Zai, and of course he's the ho the coach of the Dinos of Sinnoh. So that'll be an interesting team to go up against, and we'll have that next week. Alright guys, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good day. Bye now.